night, a local hospital is making videos to keep the community informed. And hotel guards in Las Vegas talk about the Mandalay Bay shooting. And the head of the NFL speaks out about sitting during the national anthem. Murrow News 8 starts right now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. I'm Irish Concepcion. And I'm Alfredo Llanos. Welcome to Murrow News 8. The Pullman School District fired a teacher for misconduct and past allegations of molestation. Michael Church, a former fifth grade elementary teacher at Jefferson Elementary, admitted to taking two male students to amusement parks, football games, and having them stay the night at his house. Investigators never found evidence of sexual misconduct with the two boys, but did recently find evidence that he molested two teenage boys in the 90s. A semi-crash forced residents of Potlatch to evacuate their homes early this morning. The semi was hauling explosives when the driver drove off the shoulder off the road and tripped over the side. Idaho State Police reported no injuries and evacuated homes within half a mile of the accident as a precaution. The state of Washington has an extra year before needing to enforce federal requirements for state driver's license and ID cards. The federal law requires licenses and ID cards to have additional security enhancement in order to prove that people are in the United States legally. Voters in Pullman will need to decide whether or not to approve a $10 million bond come election day. The bond would fi finance the purchase of remodeling of city administration building, a community rec center, and a senior center. The bond also requests funds for the purchase of land to build another fire station and a city event center. The Pullman, of Re the Pullman Regional Hospital is releasing a series of health education vi videos I explained the motivations behind the hospital's actions and what issues the hospital hopes to explore. Be woken up. Well, I want people to call 911 and activate the professional EMS folks. But in the meantime, the hospital is releasing a video about health education every Monday to educate the public about issues such as opioid overdose, alcohol abuse, and sexual assault. There are certain things that we see a lot of, whether they're coming in to our emergency department, um, and we want to be a leader. In order to record these videos, the hospital uses an iPad, which are not much bigger than most cell phones nowadays. But although smartphone cameras are improving, the hospital isn't really going for quality here. But what they're trying to do is just inform the viewers about the issues they're seeing in their emergency room. The hospital works with the Pullman Police Department and WSU to identify the different issues seen in Pullman. Well, we have to recognize this is a college town and it's just going to happen. And, you know, I think we typically have the philosophy that as long as nobody's hurting anybody else and not drawing too much attention to themselves, that we'll let them have their fun. The series of videos will end on November 13. However, if the feedback continues to be positive, the hospital will consider making more videos. I think based on uh, the feedback that we've been getting, it's something that people are saying we want this kind of information and um, we're prepared to provide more of that if that's what people want. The Pullman Regional Hospital plans to post another video on their Facebook page about THC edibles this Monday. Alfredo Llanos, Muro News 8. When we come back, Trump offends the widow of a fallen soldier. And the head of the NFL says what will happen to players who don't stand for the anthem. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. 
the widow of a dece deceased U.S. soldier claims that president, the president disrespected her and her family in a condolence call. The comments made by President Donald Trump, highlighted by de Democratic Congresswoman Federica Wilson, who was with the family of deceased Sergeant Le David Johnson at the time of the call. The president claims that the conversation went well. Had a very nice conversation with the woman, with the wife, who is, sounded like a lovely woman, did not say what the Congresswoman said, and most people aren't too surprised to hear that. Sergeant Johnson was one of four Americans killed in the ambush of October 4th. Although members of Trump's cabinet have come to his defense, the White House is not disputing the family's account of the call. 19 different states have come together to ask a federal judge to force the Trump administration to continue paying Obama cost-sharing payments to insurance companies. The White House said last week that it would no longer make payments after determining them to be illegal. A bipartisan deal that planned to extend the payments folded on Tuesday. President Donald Trump originally supported the deal, but now opposes it. A survivor of the Las Vegas shooting is now opening up to many Americans about his face-to-face -face encounter with the shooter. Mandalay Hotel security guard Jesus Campos made an exclusive appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show in front of over a hundred audience members. He explained what happened when he was shot in the hotel hallway. Um, as I was walking down, um, I heard rapid fire, and at first I, I took cover. I felt a burning sensation. I went to go lift my pant leg up, and I saw the blood. Other security guards believe Campos prevented others from being shot. A Mississippi school board ruled the classic novel To Kill a Mockingbird as inappropriate for students. The claim that the novel makes people feel uncomfortable. Many others believe that the uncomfort is what makes the story good. Either way, this book will go down as an American classic. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell announced that he wants all NFL, NFL players to stand for the national anthem, but will not punish them if they don't. Players continue to kneel during the national anthem, and these protests have been the talk of the NFL throughout the first six weeks of the NFL season. The league's current policy doesn't mandate players to stand during the anthem, but even if players have the right to take a knee in protest before a game, some fans object to the way. Goodell is not implementing a rule to force players to stand for the national anthem, but is very strongly recommending that action. A Canadian province passed a religious neutrality law that prevents people from wearing anything religiously linked, including face coverings when giving or receiving a public service. The city of Qu Quebec expanded the law to include services by municipal and public transportation services. Women who wear a burqa or niqab will not be allowed to cover their face when receiving government services. The Brazilian government says deforestation in the Amazon rainforest is down by 16% this year. Brazil's climate change target still is aiming out to cut down on a deforestation even further. The improvement can be attributed to stronger control over the land and larger numbers of agents patrolling forest land. This makes it harder for illegal loggers to cut down trees. After wind, rain, and cold temperatures, this weather seems like it just won't quit. After the break, Austin Getz will give you the forecast and tell you what to expect this weekend. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, 
I've always wanted to be. It has been another cloudy day here on the Palouse. I know many students are wondering how they will have to dress for the late football game on Saturday. Austin, will we need multiple layers? It's definitely looking like we will need multiple layers, but first let's talk about what it's feeling like out there. Cloudy in 52, the rain has stopped for the moment. Today's high barely getting us into the 60s, and you look at the wind, a little bit less windy than we've seen uh, from earlier in this week, which is good. Uh, today's average 59, so right around what we're usually feeling at this time. Moving into tomorrow, uh, getting out on your uh, Friday. In the morning, it's going to be under 50 in shower, so your walk to class might be a little wet. And then in the afternoon, only warming up a little bit, getting into 44. The rain should stop Friday night and uh, get into just partly cloudy. But then Saturday, as we uh, will talk about that in a second, looking around the state, pretty much just a wet state of Washington all over. You look at Seattle, Olympia, Vancouver, pretty similar uh, weather over there. In the middle of the state, we've seen Wenatchee holding on to the sunshine, but they've finally succumbed to the rain as well. And then in Yakima 63, Spokane, just a little bit warmer uh, than Pullman uh, and also rainy as well. So rain all over the state as we get into the five day forecast. Starting uh, that game on Saturday, 46 and rainy and windy. So it's definitely going to be a game that you want to get multiple layers, bring change of socks, maybe an extra pair of shoes even. Sunday looking pretty much the same. So if you had any plans of getting out into the uh, into the elements in the weekend, not not going to be a good plan and windy. It's supposed to warm up a little bit next week, but then Wednesday it looks like we're going to start the uh, rain again. So definitely not the most ideal weather for a football game, but sure the Coug faithful will be out there on Saturday, guys. After the break, a 22-year-old show that fuses fashion commentary with comedy is coming to an end. We'll tell you which one. The Fashion Police series finale is scheduled to air on November 27th, but that won't stop us from remembering its co-creator for influencing the Hollywood fashion scene. Joan Rivers originated the question, who are you wearing, which celebrities are still being asked on the red carpet. If you've missed out on her wit all these years, tune into at the end of the uh, tune into E at the end of next month to watch the Fashion Police their farewell. When you consider what people are wearing, the National Retail Federation says that Americans will purchase more costumes this Halloween than ever before. An estimate of $9.1 billion will be spent on costumes, candy, and decoration. That's about a billion dollar increase from last week's Halloween spending. Superhero costumes are expected to be the most popular among children. So what are you going to be for Halloween, guys? I don't know, but I'm probably going to get pretty creative this year. I'll probably just go as myself. Pretty boring. Yeah. I wonder what the fashion police would say about that. Uh, not, not great things, I'm Thank sure. you for watching. Join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 p.m. for Pullman's only nightly newscast. Have a great night, and don't forget to follow Maroon News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Good night, Pullman.